Hello, hello, welcome everyone. Looks like we're just connecting, so we'll wait for the last couple of students to kind of trickle in and we are good to go. Hello, welcome. This is gonna be a really, really exciting session today. We have faculty and students from the Pathum program. So uh, if you have any of your questions, we'd love to see that in the Q&A up in the top corner there. Um, but before we do begin, I'd just like to do a quick land acknowledgement. Uh, we do like to do this before each and every single one of our presentations. Uh, and although I'm not on campus and most of these students are not on campus, um, it is important that we do acknowledge that at Carleton University is on the unceded territories of the Algonquin Nation. Um, and this is really a place that we all come together and we share this land to study and grow our knowledge. So what, what a better way uh, to start this beautiful presentation on just acknowledging our lands. Uh, but without further ado, I will pass it over to Lisa Mills and she'll tell you a little bit about the Papen program. Thank you so much, Giovanna. Thank you everyone for being here today. I'm Lisa Mills. I'm the Director of the Public Affairs and Policy Management or PAPM program. Um, I'm gonna be speaking today for about 20 minutes and uh, then I'm gonna hand over to one of our students, Megan Burns, who's gonna talk about what it's like to be a Papam student and the things that she has got out of the program. And then after Megan has spoken, David Okonzi Arakosi, who is a third year student in the program, is going to be, is going to be speaking. Um, so thank you once again for everybody for being here and I will look forward to uh, receiving any questions that you have. We would also love to see you in the booth as well after the session. Okay, so I'd like to introduce the, the leadership team for PAPM. Uh, so there's me, I'm Lisa Mills, I'm the director of the program. Mary Francoli, who is the college director. PAPM is located within Arthur Kruger College on the campus of Carleton University. Mary is the director. Um, Holly Klein Swarming is the college administrator, and Shannon Sullivan is the B PAPM program administrator. And if you have any questions for us, you're welcome to contact us via the B PAPM email, bpapham at carlton.ca. And uh, today we're going to be joined by two students, David and Megan. So Beep Happen, um, people can be a little bit pardon me, people can be a little bit confused about what the BPAPM degree actually is. We examine public affairs and public policy. And broadly speaking, we can think of public policy as decisions made by government. Um, so, for example, Ontario's decision to end the wearing of masks in most indoor settings later this month, federal government's decision to invoke the Emergencies Act to address blockades in Ottawa and other locations, and the City of Ottawa's new official plan. These are all examples of public policy, and this is what PAPM is, is concerned with, is giving you the tools and skills and knowledge um, to expand your understanding of public policy and to work in that area if that is what you would like to do. So our program examines how and why public policy is made, why it's important and how it impacts our daily lives. It views policy from a number of different perspectives, including political science, law, history, economics and public administration. And it prepares students for careers in public policy, research, non-government organizations and advocacy and to be well-informed citizens. So most of our students do go on to careers in public policy, um, but even those who don't have a, a much um, better understanding of how public policy works and become uh, very well-informed citizens and um, have a research and analytic skills that they can take into a wide range of fields. It is the only undergraduate program of its kind in Canada. And because it's we are what's called a limited enrollment program, which just means a small program, um, we are able to foster a sense of belonging and community, which can be more difficult to achieve in larger programs. So some of the people who graduated from the program, uh, Joe Cressy, who's been chair of the, he's a Toronto city councillor and has been chair of the Toronto Board of Health uh, throughout the pandemic period. 
Deborah Thompson is an associate professor at McGill University. Garima Telwar Kapoor is director of research for the Maytree Foundation. That's a think tank in Toronto that is concerned with issues of e equality and inequality, particularly with regards to its impact on health. And John Nader, who's a conservative MP for Perth Wellington. So people with Papam degrees go on to um, go into careers in politics, in public policy, in the non-governmental sector. Um, a few more of our graduates. Emma Taylor is legal counsel to the Ministry of the Attorney General in Ontario. Matt Luloff is an Ottawa City Councillor. Justine Villeneuve is Director of Communications for the Office of Women and Gender Equality. And Sarah Tuni is Program Manager for the International Development Research Centre. Uh, so, yes, um, generally people with PAPM degrees go on to be policy analysts, policy advisors, such for, as, for example, in the office of the Prime Minister. They might be managers in the federal government or municipal government or provincial government. Um, we have had people and do have people working in the United Nations. Um, private sector managers, David Coletto, who established the polling firm Abacus Data, is a PAPM grad. Um, directors of NGOs, professors, public relations officers, and uh, federal MPs. So what does your first year in the PAPM degree look like? The, what we try to do in PAPM is to um, bring a number of different disciplinary perspectives to bear on public policy issues and understanding public policy. And so in first year, you get a range of those disciplines. Um, so you take a course that's an introduction to public policy, you take two uh, in economics courses, both intro to micro and to macroeconomics, course in Canadian political institutions, an Indigenous studies class, a political science class, a history class, and then you have one credit of electives, which you may need for your language requirement if you do not have that. Um, so those are, now these are the courses that form the backbone of PAPM. Um, so you would be in many of your courses with your cohort in your first year. Uh, and then from second year onwards, you will have one PAPM course each year that is forms the backbone of the program. Um, but you will then from second year onwards also be moving into your specialization. So the PAPM core courses are first year the introductory public policy course, which looks at how to analyze, implement and evaluate policy. In second year, you do a couple of theory courses, one in political theory and the other in economic theory. Um, PAPM 3000 policy research that prepares you uh, to do research at a more advanced level. It helps to give you um, the skills and knowledge that you need to do either an honors research essay, if you choose to do that, or a preparation for master's or other graduate study if you wish to do that too. Uh, there is in your fourth year, a capstone seminar in your area of specialization. A capstone seminar kind of brings together the knowledge that and the skills that you've acquired in the previous three years. Uh, there's also a capstone seminar for the entire PAPM cohort, um, which looks at a particularly um, uh, present policy issues. So the last two years, it's been on the, the ethics and policy of policy making with regard to COVID. Uh, and also in your fourth year, uh, you have the option of doing an honours research essay, which is a major research paper you would undertake with a faculty supervisor. Now from second year on, I'm just going to check my time here. From second year on, uh, you you choose a, an area of specialization. So the whole degree is concerned with public policy, but you can get to specialize in a particular area of public policy that's of interest to you. There are four specializations, communication and policy studies, development policy studies, international policy, policy studies, or public policy and administration, which is mostly concerned with uh, Canadian public policy. And each specialization has policy streams. 
So these are the, the policy streams here. Communication and policy studies is concerned. You can choose, further specialize into communication technologies and regulation or strategic public opinion. Uh, strategic public opinion being to do with um, political campaigns, opinion polling, market research, and so on. Communication technology and regulation being concerned with things such as how do we reg regulate the tech giants? What do we do about what Facebook represents in terms of potential threats to democratic practice? Um, those kind of questions. Development policy studies. Uh, the, there are three substreams: rights and human development, global economic relations, and indigenous policy. Um, but all of these are broadly concerned with um, uh, relations between uh, the global north and the global south and the impact of those relations on the global economy, individual economies and the human rights of the people living in the globe. Um, indigenous policy, of course, is concerned with, in, with uh, Indigenous policy in both Canada and other countries. International policy studies is two further streams, international relations and conflict or security and intelligence. And the public policy and administration, you can further specialise in social policy, which is to do with issues such as poverty, inequality, housing, health, economic policy to do with the, the growth of the economy and, again, issues related to um, economic growth, unemployment, poverty. Um, environmental and sustainable energy policy or indigenous policy. Uh, for all specializations, students must do intermediate French, which at Carlton is French 1100. Um, if you already have an intermediate level French equivalent, that can be tested at the French Department of French and you would get credit for that. Um, if you do the International Policy Studies specialization, you do French 1100 plus another language at the intermediate level or advanced French. Um, the, because the, we only admit a relatively small number of students, our entrance score, the average is usually it's between 83 and 85 percent the interest, entrance score, but uh, last year we had our students had an average of 90 percent. We admit 80 to 100 students each year. Um, the Ontario High School requirements are six 4UM courses. Um, no specific pre prerequisites and an Ontario secondary school diploma or, equi um, or equivalent if you're for some, from somewhere else, obviously. Experiential learning. We do have opportunities for experiential learning in, uh, in Papam. Um, the first year, now, when it's possible to do this in person, students spend half a day with a public policy organisation in Ottawa in order to learn about the real world of policy. Um, from your second year onwards, there is the opportunity to do co-op, so opportunities to learn and get paid for, work with non with a government or a non-governmental organisation. And that requires a B plus or better and study abroad. So with grades of B or better, you can apply to spend one or two terms in Asia, Africa, the Americas or Europe. Uh, so the capital advantage, being in Ottawa is one of the great things. If you're interested in policy and politics and government, to be in Ottawa is really fantastic because there are these opportunities to interact with people working in policy. Um, again, when we're online, when we're in person rather, there will be more opportunities for this. Um, but there's opportunities such as foreign embassies and high commissions. Um, our students also frequently work as House of Commons pages or Senate pages, have the opportunity to visit government departments and think tanks and to have those people come to Carlton. So being in Ottawa really provides a lot of opportunities that do not necessarily exist in other parts of the country. And uh, another important thing Papam has as a relatively small program uh, is that Papam students have their own dedicated advisor, okay? So um, if they, they need advice on moving through the program, there is somebody dedicated within the program to do that. 
Uh, the other thing is that all first year students are assigned an upper year student mentor. And we actually have a program for the first few weeks of the first semester when students join us in which uh, their mentor checks in with them every couple of weeks, um, asks, answers questions for them and is a resource. Uh, which is, again, when people are making the transition from high school to university, this is a really a fantastic uh, opportunity for people. Um, another great resource, and one of the students here today, Megan, uh, was president of uh, the Student Society. So the Papam Student Society organises social events um, and study sessions, uh, community engagement opportunities, and the Papam students and the Student Society are one of the things that makes Papam such a great program. The Student Society is very active. It's been very active in some of the reforms of the program that have occurred recently, um, very active in establishing and reforming the, the mentorship program, and they are a huge resource and support, particularly for first-year students. And uh, there are some of the students at Pride a couple of years ago. Um, something that if you're interested in graduate study, and I know some people are thinking about that already, uh, credits completed in a fourth year of a BPAP and degree may count towards both the degree and a graduate degree at Carleton in a Master's of Public Policy and Administration, Master's of Political Management, a degree in the Norman Patterson School of International Affairs or the Institute of European, Russian or Eurasian Studies. Um, Papam is part of Arthur Kruger College, uh, along with the Biggins degree, Bachelor of Global and International Studies, the Master of Public Management and the Masters in Migration and Diaspora Studies. Uh, so we have kind of a, a small area in, in the university that's carved out specifically for Papam uh, and it has a common room for students and a classroom in which some of the, uh, the Papam classes will, will be held um, and of course the, the uh, college and Papam administrator are located there. So it does actually help to provide a sense of community, the fact that Papam students have this space. And um, so the college in which, in which Papam was located, Arthur Kruger is named after Arthur Kruger. He was a foreign service officer who served in Geneva, New Delhi and Washington. He was deputy minister in six government departments and known as the Dean of Deputy Ministers. And he was chancellor of Carlton University. So um, thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to hand over to Megan in a moment, but please put any questions into the Q&A and uh, come to see us in the booth after the presentation. And now I'm going to hand it over to Megan. Awesome. Thanks so much, Lisa. Um, really glad to see some folks here. Excited to talk a little bit about this program, which I'm sadly leaving soon. So this is going to be a little bit um, nostalgic in some ways, because uh, I I do love this program, and I'm really lucky to have been a part of it for so long. So I'll just share my screen here. It's so funny. I feel like I'm in grade, I know probably a lot of you are in grade 12 coming in. I feel like this is my grade 12 year now, kind of moving into the next uh, portion of this. So um, you're doing the right thing by coming to these uh, events and learning everything you can about these options. So this is kind of a presentation just to explain why PABM is an option that I really think you should consider and really take this information and kind of put it into what your goals are and how you want to kind of learn because this is a, a great option for that. All right, so my name is Megan. I use she, her pronouns, and I am from Ottawa, Ontario. Uh, I, I really do like the city of Ottawa. It's a great place, um, and it's been my home for a long time, and I really am glad that I got to go to school here. Lucky to have that kind of opportunity, and I'm specialized, or I'm finishing up my specialization in rights and human development, so I was under one of those development policy streams. As Lisa mentioned, I was involved with um, PAPAMS. I'm currently on the Carleton Senate. Um, I've done some different things with some of the resource centers on campus, like the Gender and Sexuality Resource Center. Um, I'm currently 
in a play the next week, actually, with Sock and Buskin, which is the theater uh, company on campus, and as also on the Varsity Nordic Ski Team. So these are just these are just some cool things that are at Carleton, just as a kind of overview of lots of different things you can get involved with as part of uh, Carleton campus, not just within Papham. But um, and then I had one of my favorite classes that I've taken throughout my degree. I took this really cool one about sustainability and the environment in the global south. And I learned a lot about food sovereignty uh, and kind of a lot of those issues that face agriculture in different parts of the world, which I didn't really know anything about before this class. And one of my favorite places in Ottawa is the Conroy Pit Dog Park, which I take my dog to a lot. So that's a little bit about me. And so for me, I chose Papam uh, for a lot of different reasons, but it really, for me, came down to this idea of the community. Lisa mentioned it a little bit before, but I really think Papam is an incredible community of people that are really passionate, that are really smart and driven and um, have a lot of really great ideas for how to make the world a better place. I think it's also a really cool community because it's kind of an intersection of a lot of different aspects of Canadian political life. And I think that is really cool to see kind of the, the breadth of perspectives. Um, and then also the faculty itself, uh, we mentioned having our own dedicated academic advising. This is not the case for a lot of other programs. Um, it's a lot harder to kind of get that support you need in, in some ways because you don't have that dedicated person. You don't have that dedicated um, space either. So I think Papam really prides itself on this community. And I think that's a huge asset for the program. I also love the variety of courses. Um, there's so many cool things to learn about. University is a great time to just learn about so many different things. And I think Papam does a really good job of having it, let you, letting you do a lot of variety of courses while making it kind of focused and bringing you a lot of different perspectives that maybe you wouldn't have taken by yourself, like economics, for example, that's something that some people have a lot of hard, hard time with sometimes, but it's a great, way to understand those concepts and those perspectives. And then the reputation of Papam, uh, this program's been, I think it's 20th year? No, yeah, we had the 20th anniversary a couple of years ago. Um, and it's, so it's been around and people know that Papam students are some of the best of the best and have a proven track record of, of really um, making people that can think critically, think critically and I have to speak well here, uh, and are able to do good good work and uh, really learn those skills. And that's, I think you can see that in our alumni for sure. So some of the top three things that I've learned, um, again, the diverse perspective on world issues. When you're taking classes from so many different uh, lenses, whether that's history, whether that's law, whether that's economics, you really understand the world in different ways, which is so important when you're um, trying to find the best decision, which is what we're trying to do when we make policy. And I learned the many different ways you can work in policy. So as you saw, there's so many different um, paths that people have gone into, and there's so many different ways that policy intersects in, in our lives, not just as a politician. So I think that was really valuable as well. And then just in general, how to think critically and analyze. And I think those are skills that will serve you in all aspects of your life. And I think those are really important skills to kind of be able to tackle those big um, facing our world today. So for me, uh, my next steps are, am I, I'm graduating this spring, hopefully. And I'm interested in pursuing a, a master's of community planning as a potential next step. Um, and I'm hoping to work, we have an interview to work with the Ottawa River Keeper, which is a local water conservation um, group. So that's kind of a little bit uh, about me. So I'll just stop sharing here. And if you have any uh, questions about that, uh, I'd love to answer those in the chat or uh, such, but I'll hand it over to Davey to talk about his experience oh. with Pop. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Lisa. Thank you. Um, <laughs> maybe just before you do that, can you just tell people yeah. where you are right now? Because I think oh, okay. <laughs> we were just chatting before. Um, so uh, I'm a volunteer or I'm part of a, a project um, with the Canadian Parks and Wilderness Society um, doing a, a stewardship program. So I'm currently uh, at a summit in the, the Pontiac region, um, kind of learning about uh, water conservation in the, the Coulomb River is where I'm, where I'm at and why it's a very important uh, river to protect and watershed to protect to be able to kind of keep the viability of the Ottawa River um, for generations as well. So 
lots of cool opportunities out there and, and there's lots of uh, interesting people doing interesting things in this program. So I'm, I'm continually inspired by, by my, uh, my peers as well when, when I hear them doing cool things. So it keeps me inspired. <laughs> Thanks, Lisa. Thank you so much, Megan. So I'm going to hand over now to Davy, who is in third year and in the International Relations Specialization. And Davy will tell you a bit more about that. Hello, everyone. Uh, like you heard, my name is Davy. I am a third year PAPM student currently specializing in international policy studies on international relations and conflict. Uh, I'm originally uh, from Quebec, where I studied most of my life before applying to PAPM in the summer of 2020. Uh, and I'd like to say that uh, my interest in this program was a mix of luck because I stumbled upon it pretty much and accumulated interest given my past schooling and extracurricular experience. For those who might not know, Quebec's educational system normally requires students to complete two or three years of CJET before entering university. And so during that time, I had a lot of uh, uh, time to uh, develop that extensive interest for uh, the social sciences and more particularly political science, economics, history, and sociology. And so uh, while all of these subjects grabbed my attention, I found it, it was a bit hard to uh, harmonize the material learned and give it practical form, especially when I was reading sort of the programs that were offered in Quebec, etc. And so um, what I mean by that is that it was great to discuss um, in class, like current and past societal norms, problems and solutions. Most of that conversation did not elaborate on how people navigate these topics together in day-to-day -day life. And also more specifically, the tools that our uh, civil servants and government and firms address them or use to address them. And so I was interested not only in how theories, um, macroeconomics could be combined with sociological debates about class, race, gender, uh, to paint a picture of our current Canadian social economy, but also um, how could we continuously monitor these factors, identify problems, and especially fix them. I was uh, very involved in uh, the sort of extracurricular environment of, of uh, my CJEP, being in the student society, being involved in three different clubs and administering them, etc. And I, I developed sort of that drive to not only just discuss problems, but also find solutions and also present them to uh, the broader community. And so when I was looking at PAPM, um, I, I was just really captivated by how I can make a job out of that. And so I think that um, this is exactly what drew my attention to uh, PAPM. And um, so now how, what can I say about the program? Well, for one, I'd like to say that uh, the range and depth of the PAP, of PAPM is what really sells it. Like Lisa mentioned, like uh, Megan mentioned as well. Uh, once you complete your uh, introductory courses, you have sort of that broad, uh, the option to select different courses in different fields and different specializations aligned with your interests. And they're all uh, conveniently grouped in specialized profiles. And for me, that meant I had room to explore and experiment to determine what specific field I wanted to get into. And even in the mandatory PAPM specific courses that Lisa mentioned earlier, uh, they're designed in a way that uh, it never entraps you in one or specific view or approach. And so um, it can sort of tackle current issues in different ways. And you always are able to construct those bridges between the subjects that interest you and the course topic. And so um, that's something that I found really great about the program. Uh, another thing that also was mentioned uh, by Megan uh, briefly, um, or faculties like inc incredibly knowledgeable and to give you know roses to Lisa amongst other teachers, they're very entertaining. And I think this last one is often uh, overlooked in university, but having an engaged teacher that inspires students to, uh, is something that I find is uh, super important especially universities in university and moving on in your career. Um, and also for me, given that I sort of enrolled during the COVID years and when everything was online, this was something that I was concerned about, but I, I thankfully was, uh, you know, pleased to see that things were addressed um, by, you know, this welcoming, uh, welcoming staff and welcoming uh, teaching faculty. And that leads to, uh, 
another point uh, that also that Megan brought up. Thankfully, I realized that there's a lot of crossover between our points and it's the community. Um, you'll find that the program is relatively small. And so for most, uh, most of the part, you'll progress through the years with the same students and the same faces and uh, you'll grow accustomed to each other. And so I found that uh, my fellow partners are, were super helpful and welcoming and uh, that we're all sort of part of this intricate family where everyone has a different pack background, have different values, and where we're all sort of strive to, you know, make our society better in government and in policy. And so I know that it sounds a bit tacky, but I believe that this particular program attracts particular people that will always entertain your own curiosity and inspire new ways of thinking and understanding our world. And um, on that note, I would like to emphasize for you students entering or interested in entering the program, um, I would like to emphasize developing those links between your fellow students and creating that bond uh, with each other. Be open to different viewpoints and ideas so that you can broaden your perspective on policy and how things are or ought to be. And I would like to also point to the very dedicated and helpful staff uh, with Lisa, Shannon, and Holly, uh, who are doing their best to keep us up to date with news about the program, helpful resources, and also uh, career opportunities. Um, they have helped me greatly with my own concern throughout the year, uh, the years in a way that I was not expected, expecting from regular staff. And so I'd like to uh, leave you guys on this note. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to drop them in the chat. Okay, thank you so much, Davey. Um, I think everybody watching today will, will see, you know, the greatest thing about PAPAM is the students and Megan and, and Davey are just great examples of how interesting and interested our students are. Uh, so are there, if there are any questions, please put them in the Q&A and uh, Megan or Davey or Holly or I will be happy to introduce to address them. Oh, I would also like to introduce Holly Klein Swarmink, who is uh, the college administrator and who is very kindly here with us today. Are there any are there any questions? Um, just to, to give uh, a little bit of time for questions, um, Megan and Davey, can you talk a little bit about um, what what drew you, what drew you to how you learned about Papam and what drew you to Papam? Uh, I guess I'll go first. Um, like I mentioned, it was sort of like it was a bit of a lucky encounter, really, because I I'm in Quebec and at the time I'm looking at different schools and different programs and nothing was really like captivating my interests at first i was like oh well maybe i'll just you know join a political science course etc but it felt a bit restrictive in a way i felt like if i were in close in that just specific field i would feel uh there's a lot of different ideas that wouldn't you know that I wouldn't be able to develop too much on, upon and then really one day i opened a pamphlet and i saw carlton on the thing, on, on the options. And at first I didn't really think about it because it was sort of like the out of province experience, things didn't really align in that sense. But then I read a little bit more about the program. I, I read like everything sort of checked out with all the things that I wanted to do about connecting um, the different interests that I have, putting them in, uh, a, like practically addressing them. And also um, how can I develop on those ideas and a public policy sense. I, I didn't really know what policy meant, but I just knew that it's what really shaped um, our world and our society. And it's something that uh, I saw what, uh, as an opportunity to, you know, develop on the material that I knew and give them practical meaning. So this was something that really drew, drew me into the program. Um, Megan, yeah, do you want to talk a little bit about how you learned about Papam and uh... yeah, so I had um, 
I had a lot of anxiety going into university and I was like going to every single university fair, learning every single thing I could about every program that existed. Um, and so Papam was definitely one of those things that I kind of saw and I was like, that looks interesting. I really don't know what I want yet. Um, and I did apply for a couple things out of out of grade 12. I think my top choice at the time had been University of Toronto, actually. Um, and I also got into Papam and I said, oh, this is a great idea, but I don't know if I want to stay in Ottawa, someone that's from Ottawa. So I actually uh, deferred my Papam and took a year off. And I kind of came back and did a little bit more exploring. So again, that's also another option for those that are in grade 12. Like I totally recommend gap years. I think they're an awesome way to kind of understand yourself a little bit more and be really prepared to kind of get into that work mindset again. And it really helped me kind of understand that, yes, this is something I really enjoy. I really enjoy problem solving. I really enjoy understanding these world systems. I was able to travel and kind of see how a lot of those other um, things that I was seeing traveling really intersect with those ideas and like a lot of the problems I was seeing in the, in the world were associated with governance and, and how how communities are made and how things all that all that happened so I thought this was a really great avenue to be able to do that and Ottawa is the place to kind of learn that there is the the skill here there is that um, kind of library of knowledge that of, of people um, that you can pull from so it's just a really great place um, to have that connection and I think that that's a big reason why I took it and then yeah as I said the community again there's a U of T for example um, for me it was just too big of a school and the number becoming a number um, wasn't really what I wanted I really wanted to feel connected and I think that is so important especially in an age where it feels like everything's kind of going everywhere and just having that grounding um, aspect of, of Papam is again as I said a huge asset and I really really um, strongly recommend that for for folks that are coming into university which is already a big overwhelming time. Mm -hmm. um, we have a question in the chat um, which are, what are the, some of the benefits of having a program with such a high amount of required credits? Um, but Davy and Megan might want to jump in here too. Um, one, of the, one of the benefits we think of having, of having a lot of required credits is to provide you with um, skills and perspectives and knowledge that are related to public policy in general and to your particular area of specialization. So um, the program, I mean, it, it's something that we debate in the program because people actually both appreciate the rigidity of the program because it means that there is kind of a curriculum that enables you to develop in a particular way over the course of four years. Um, but people sometimes find that, you know, people sometimes find it a bit inflexible and, um, and wish there were more electives. But then when you say, oh, you know, well, what would you take away? And then they're like, oh, but that course was really beneficial and that course was really beneficial. So we try to spike a balance between um, giving people some flexibility and making sure that uh, there are there are courses that really relate to the things that we think are going to be helpful and necessary for you in future. Um, but Megan or Davy, would you like to jump in on that? Sure. Oh, would you want to go first? Me? No, just... go for it. Go for it. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I I think I think in the way like I mentioned earlier. Um, the the, pro, the the way that courses are designed, even the pattern specific specific ones, that the required courses, they're always designed in a way that like allows you to, you know, build upon different uh, knowledge. Even though you're like learning about like different theories, different uh, methods, different uh, policy frameworks, you're sort of like always given the option to um, emphasize on what interests you, and so like that can be from different electives or etc and so like you it, even though it, you have those required courses there's always sort of like this freedom to navigate and choose what you want to emphasize on what you want to learn and and how you want to present it also and so i think that um like lisa was saying giving it form or giving it like a, a clear path or direction to it doesn't necessarily limit it uh uh too much in what you're learning 
Thanks, Megan and Davey. Um, I see a question from Luke here. I've received my conditional offer for BPAP but wasn't aware that a French course would be required as I'm not strong in it. How in-depth is this course as I'm now very concerned? I would say, Luke, please don't be concerned. Um, the reason why we require you to do French is because it's really important for working in public policy, particularly in Ottawa. Um, although it might seem a bit daunting now, if you don't have French, it's going to be a problem for you at the end of your degree. So. Um, this is an area where we try to at least begin to prepare you for, for that world in which French would be necessary. Um, so if you don't have French, you would start off with two French courses. Um, so French 1001 and 1002, I think. So you would start off with beginners, two courses in beginners French, and then you would do French 1100. And um, you, you know, while I wouldn't suggest waiting to do it until the last minute, uh, you can, you know, do French, the first two beginner French courses in your first year and, and then French 1100 in your second year, and then you, you get it out of the way. So please accept our offer. <laughs> Don't let French put you off because if you do a degree in which you you're trying to avoid French and you want to work in public policy, that is not going to stand you in good stead later in your life. And um, <clears throat> I'm somebody who firmly believes that the more language uh, more language learning you can do in your under undergrad degree, the better. And so while it might be a bit painful, it's the kind of pain that's actually going to be uh, helpful to you. Um, but yes, you know, we won't put you into a French 1100 course if you're not ready for French 1100, you would have the opportunity to build up to French 1100. Um, when would we need to take the French proficiency test? That would be, Holly, would you like to answer that one? Or it would be in September and... Yeah, so I'll just clarify that there is a difference between um, a proficiency test and a placement test. So. For most students coming into the program, what they will do is complete a placement test. And that test is just an online one that you'll do um, through a website on Carleton Central. And that would tell you, okay, you need to take this level of French. Um, and so for anyone who's worried about their French speaking abilities, you know, if, if you are coming in with very little French speaking ability, you'll be placed in the lowest beginner level and you'll, you'll start there. And most students have no problem with that. Um, the proficiency test is a little bit different. It is if you feel you already have intermediate proficiency, it's something that would be arranged with the French department um, to essentially evaluate. Yes, you have the proficiency that we're looking for to uh, to complete your language requirement for this degree. And that would mean that you if you meet the appropriate level, you wouldn't need to complete any additional language courses unless you pursue the international studies um, pathway through the degree. So there is a bit of a difference there. And we do understand that the language requirements a bit complicated at times. Um, so you're always welcome to send us emails as you enter the program about that. And we can help kind of make you understand what works for your particular situation. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Annika, for that question. And yes, um, please feel free to contact us at bpapamatcarlton.ca if you've got any more questions about that. Um, Gabeni, what are some of the, and I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly, um, what are some co-op placements? Okay, so most of the co-op placements are with the, the federal government. Uh, and so that could be with, you know, an organisation like um, Global Affairs Canada. One of our students actually has done a number of co-ops and then ended up working part-time with Global Affairs Canada in the Myanmar branch and was working when the coup happened in Myanmar and got to be, you know, in on all the action and the sort of 2 a.m. phone calls as to, you know, what the Canadian officers were, were doing in, in Myanmar at that time. Um, you could also work for um, Indigenous and Northern, um, Northern Affairs Canada, uh, the Department of Defence, um, Employment and Social Development Canada. So the whole range of government departments, student, students get co-ops in. Um, and we also have a small number of co-ops with non-governmental organisations, uh, such as the Ottawa Food Banks, um, as the uh, United Nations Association of Canada, um, development organisations like Water Aid Canada. Uh, so co-ops can just can be a fantastic experience. You get um, an insight into what public policy work is like. 
um, you get to, to do some real public policy work and you get to really build your skills and understanding of, of what that world is like. Okay. Oh. Can I just hop in on the, the French as well? Oh yeah, thanks Megan, yes, please yeah. do. I just put in the chat there, um, in case you don't know about it, the Explore program is mm -hmm. um, a program that is a great way to kind of immerse yourself in French. I know that I do have a lot of, uh, I personally went through the French immersion program, um, so it wasn't as big of a concern for me, but I do have a lot of friends that came from um, the GTA, who came from uh, like Alberta that really d did not have a lot of opportunity to practice speaking French. And they were still able to make through um, their French language requirement, uh, even those that were in international policy specialization had take a little bit higher level French and the Explore program is one way to do that so it's essentially a fully funded um, uh, immersion experience for five weeks in places like Quebec. Uh, I did one in New Brunswick and it's essentially five weeks of French language learning at any level um, and you live for free basically for five weeks which is a pretty sweet deal um, and you can do it as early I think, yeah, they have programs for, for younger kids as well, but um, a grade, the summer after grade 12 is a great time to do it. Uh, I did it in between second year, no, first year and second year. So that was a good time for me as well. And you can get credits uh, if depending where you have to go. So you have to look into that a little bit, but that is another option for that. So I just wanted to highlight that for those that may have not done all their summer plans yet. Thank you so much, Megan. Um, now, Davy, I don't know whether you would want to answer this question. I'm seeing a question from um, Nathaniel. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Could you please tell me what the security and intelligence specialization is like, kind of thing, studies, and where such a specialization would take one? So security and intelligence is, is to do with... Um, you know, espionage, military intelligence, um, the kind of intelligence that's necessary to protect national security. And you would be looking at issues such as national security, terrorism, um, the ways in which one might pursue national security goals while also trying to protect things like individual civil liberties and democratic practices. Um, it, it's, it's focused more on... Um, yeah, questions of uh, how the intelligence aspect of um, trying to protect national security and what kind of what kind of information is necessary. How does one go about it, and how does one uh, pursue that whilst ensuring that other democratic values get get met? Um, David, do you want to add anything there? Well. I, I'm I'm into uh, international relations and conflict stream, but it, there's so, there, there's a few crossover uh, relating to uh, to the intelligence stream. I think we have a lot of courses that are shared, um, and uh, one thing that uh, I've been learning, at least in my in my area of specialization, is sort of like the um, the international concerns of like and and how uh, states interact with each other. And what are um, sort of the things that are put into consideration? Those things, and one of them could be national security, and and, and especially in the topics of conflict, um, what are those sort of like, um, what are those interests, and how they pit against each other, and 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 what are the uh, uh, what are the approaches that the international community take to addressing those issues, whether it's within states or whether it's between states or with other organizations at different levels that also interact with uh, with with those international actors. And so, yeah. Thank you, Davey. Um, okay, so I think we're, we're out of time for our session. Um, I would like to thank everyone who attended and uh, who asked questions. Thank you so much. If you would like to join us in the booth, you're welcome to do so. And thank you so much to Megan, Davey, Holly uh, for presenting and for being here today and for Giovanna for working behind the scenes. So thank you so much and uh, we hope to see you in the booth.